Okay, well, I reckon that it's time for some sharing. What do you say, Frankfurt? Are we ready to share? Yeah. Are we ready to share? Okay. So, every single one of you came here to share because you trusted that this would be time well spent. Well, I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about why I believe the sharing economy is transforming our world and how every single one of us can benefit if we know the secret that's at the heart of it. You see, I'm passionate about the sharing economy because I believe that sharing can change the world. So what is the sharing economy? Well, it's a socio-economic system built around the sharing of human and physical resources. Knowledge, skills, time, goods, cars, clothes, food, housing. But the sharing economy is often misunderstood. The sharing in the term sharing economy doesn't mean it's free. It's about accessing shared resources. It's a hybrid economy with different forms of value exchange. Rent, swap, borrow, lend, exchange, cooperate, co-create, collaborate. All of these terms refer to different types of sharing. So there are over 3.5 trillion pounds worth of idle resources in the world. Food, shelter, water. Yet 40,000 people die every single day because they don't have access to food, shelter, and water. And so in a sharing economy, we connect idle resource with need. So there's no need for poverty. Well, that sounds all well and good. But how do we build a sharing economy? It sounds like an impossible task. A dream, maybe. But there's a secret to building a sharing economy. And it was on a trip 30 years ago that I discovered that secret. So when I was 19, I drove across America with my best friend for just $30. We took what's known as an auto drive away, a form of car sharing, where you transport someone else's car and you just pay for the gas. We had the time of our lives. It was a magic experience. And it sparked my interest in what's now known as the sharing economy. In our case, we needed a car, but we had no cash. And a family needed their car transporting. It was a win-win situation. Now, somewhere between the Grand Canyon and Las Vegas, I had this epiphany that when you trust someone, something wonderful can happen. When you trust, life is an adventure. You see, we needed to get somewhere, and we trusted each other. We trusted that we could drive for five days 3,000 miles. We trusted that the car would even get us there. We trusted our driving, which may have been a mistake. But we had this incredible experience. And along the way, I realized that the reason that something wonderful happens when you trust is because you open yourself up to sharing. You see, first you trust, and then you share. So the first step towards building a society based around sharing is to trust. So trust is the secret to building a sharing economy. Well, that's all well and good. But how do we know who to trust or what to trust? Let's face it, you can't just trust anyone these days, can you? <laughs> so I'm embarrassed to tell you 
what happened next, but I'm going to trust that you didn't mock me, that you won't mock me. So we needed someone to share the driving. But before you can share, you've got to trust. So we needed to find a stranger who we could trust. Now, back in the analog days of 1986, this wasn't so easy, right? So I wrote an ad, and I put this in the local newspaper. And here's what it said. Two attractive, <laughs> adventurous, British girls looking for someone to share the drive from Washington, D.C. to L.A. If you're up for it, call us. <laughs> now, not surprisingly, this attracted several perverts <laughs> who were clearly not to be trusted, right? So we did what 19-year-old girls did back in the pre-social media world of 1986. We went to a bar. And there we met fellow student John, the existentialist. And it was decided that he would join us on our cross-country adventure. <laughs> and there's John. Now, you see, we listened to our instincts. So when we got the perverts calling, we knew that they were not to be trusted. But when we met John in the bar, we knew that he was. We trusted our instincts. We trusted ourselves. So the key to trust is that first, we have to trust ourselves. Because how can we trust others if we don't trust ourselves? But trusting yourself is really difficult, isn't it? It's hard to listen to that voice, to go with your gut, to trust yourself. It takes strength, it takes courage, it takes self-confidence. But just think, when you do trust, you open yourself up to sharing. You open yourself up to positivity and positivity and experiences. So if we try, just imagine, overcome our fear, that negativity, and we dare to trust ourselves, and we open up ourselves to possibility, to potential, to adventure, to change. How we can transform our own lives and the world. Because when you share, you're saying, I am vulnerable. I can't do this by myself. I'm choosing to do this with someone else. You reveal your true self. You show that you are a sharer. Because to share is to be human. To share is to be human. Now, trusting ourselves is one thing, but of course, how do we trust strangers? How do we trust strangers? Well, fortunately, in this day and age, we no longer have to rely on instincts alone. And I would argue, and I believe, that there's never been a better time to trust. Thanks to the rise of the sharing economy and the over 10,000 different apps and platforms and projects worldwide, we can share everything from dogs to didgeridoos. We can find housing, jobs, food, clothing. Here you have it. Experiences. We can even find love. Everything that you do every single day, every transaction, every experience, every activity can be done better through the sharing economy. But first, you have to trust. You can transform your life by sharing. One social enterprise in the UK, Fairshare, last year delivered 18.3 million meals to people living in food poverty out of food that would have needlessly gone to landfill. Just think about that. Car sharing reduces household carbon emissions 
by 37%. This is the world that we build if we can trust. Just think about that. So there's never been a better time to trust. And now we rate others. We verify their identities. We have these online reputations, these personas. We can find out more information about people, about strangers, than we ever could through traditional means. There has never been a better time to trust. Now we can make informed decisions about who to trust. We can decide who's shareworthy. So it is possible to trust. And as I've shown, there are three ways in which we can safely trust strangers. So first, as I've mentioned, is trust yourself. Listen to that inner voice. What does your gut tell you? Don't ignore it. Trust yourself. Do your research, because today you can. When I decided that we were going to do our first family house swap, my husband was convinced that our home was going to get trashed. So, of course, I had to go online and do, do the research. And I checked out the family that had answered our request on a home swapping site. What did other people say about them? Were they good sharers? Did they have good sharing ratings? And then I communicated with them. I asked them questions. What kind of holiday were they looking for? What were their interests? I spoke to them. The conversations, and the inf I got every bit of information that I needed to make that informed decision. And every one of us can do that. And thirdly, verify identity. We can run identity checks on anybody so that we know that someone is who they say they are. There are lots of tools out there to do this. And if you carry out these three steps, you can safely trust strangers. And if we trust, we're open to sharing and we can transform our world. So Julie and I clocked up 2,800 miles and we arrived in LA, you'll be relieved to hear, safe and sound with John, the existentialist, he made the full journey, and hundreds of incredible memories. It was an unforgettable trip. And you see, we trusted. We opened ourselves up to sharing. And something wonderful happened. You see, I believe that what's wrong with the world is that there's a shortage of sharing. And we can fix that. Because although our resources are finite, our potential to share is unlimited. And if we can unleash our collective capability to share and collaborate, there is no end to what we can achieve together. But first, we need to dare to trust. Because, of course, trust is the secret to the sharing economy. And trust we must to build a better world. Because sharing feeds, clothes, educates. And those 40,000 people that die each day because they don't have access to food, shelter, and water don't need to die. But first, we need to dare to trust. And as I've shown, now we all know how, and we can trust safely. And together, we can build this sharing economy. You came here today to share. But first, you trusted that this would be time well spent. I hope that for all of you, something wonderful happened today. I'm Benita Matowska. Thank you for sharing.